I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring a fascinating book. It is called The Russ Hills Project. It's written by a terrific author. Her name is Kay Francis Scott. This captivating book takes readers on a journey through the unique geological marvel of the Lus Hills, a landscape shaped over millennia by the forces of nature. Join us as we delve into the beauty and significance of this natural wonder captured through the words and images of two friends on a summer adventure. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her amazing book. The links are below this interview. Kay, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you so much, Logan. It's a pleasure to be here. The pleasure is all mine. Let's start out by giving uh, the folks at home uh, a little lesson in geology and environment. What are the Lus Hills? The Lus Hills are are basically a unique um, uh, composition of soil um, that is formed over time by erosion and earthquakes. Hmm. And um, it it um, it's very easily moved, like it's wind blown. And at the same time, it adheres to itself and holds water and holds, it holds itself very well, and yet it's wind blown. So the land beyond the Lus Hills, the, like the, the river bottom, is a great place to plant. It's a good soil for planting, um, but also it only exists in one other place on earth, and that is a certain province in China. Hmm. which I would have to look at my book to remember the name of the province. <laughs> um, but um, in the, like, hundreds of years ago, there was um, an earthquake. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the Wangtu Plateau. It's 640 kilometers covering uh, the upper reaches of China's Yellow River. And on January 23rd of 1556, there was an earthquake in Shanxi during the Ming Dynasty, and it killed, reportedly killed 830,000 people. But that's, and that's part of what formed uh, the lust soil in China. So it only exists here in Iowa and then in that province in China. Amazing. That is an amazing story and a good backstory for your book. Let's give the folks at home an overview of what your book is about. Tell us a little bit about the story. Well, a friend of mine came to visit from New York, and I lived there a very long time. And um, we're both uh, actresses, and we probably met at an audition a million years ago. She flew out because she'd never been here, although she's traveled a lot. And um, we decided to take a day trip. Mm -hmm. So got in my car and toured the Lus Hills. And Carla, Carla Louise has, as I say, traveled a lot. She takes wonderful photographs, always has. So she, it was her idea. She said, I want to create um, a series of photographs for you to flesh out with, you, with your writing. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did, basically. And we followed um, Old Highway 141, which starts just on the east end of Sioux City. Mm -hmm. It's a two-lane highway. It's been around forever. And it I think it ends in Des Moines. I'm not sure. But it goes through the Lust Hills. And that's what we did on that on this particular day that she was here. Amazing. Well, this book took more than just that one day, right? You, did you go back and revisit? Tell us a little bit about you know, um, it's not that I revisited so much, but that I looked at the photographs and showed them to friends who have lived here all the years that I was gone, who were able to say this happened, that happened. Plus, I lived on Old Highway 141, just, um, I think it would be east, just east of Holly Springs, about a quarter of a mile when I was like four years old, four and five years old. And there is a photograph in the book of the Holly Springs Public School. My father's twin brother and sister graduated from that high school. I went to that 
kindergarten and halfway through first grade before we moved to the town of Salix where I grew up. But I have memories from from that from those two years on the on Highway 141, right at the edge of the Lus Hills. Amazing, amazing. And so it all kind of came full circle in a way. Tell yes. us what was the most striking moment or scene you experienced while exploring the Lus Hills? You know, I think certainly there is an overlook and there and um seeing the vast the vastness of the Los Hills, a panoramic view. It was just exquisite. And the best thing about the lookout is, or the most telling thing is this. You get in by a certain road and you don't get out by any other road. You turn around yeah. and take that same road back out. And um, and that was pretty amazing. That was pretty amazing. But the small towns, like the little towns that come off, there are high, two lane highways that go off of 141, sort of like, like vertebrae off a spine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw a small house in Rodney that was empty. And we saw, and this is a story I learned well after the book was published, which is there's a photograph of a cupola on a street corner in Mapleton. And a friend of mine who lived in Mapleton for a long time said, you know, in the 30s and early 40s, if there were bank robbers on the in the in the in the area, right. they would post a lookout in the cupola because there were banks on two quarters of that intersection. Amazing. So I wish, I, I wish little, I'd known that. A little bit of history you wouldn't know uh, unless you knew it. Uh, tell us um, what was it like trying to put words to these images and tell us a little bit about the text that we'll find in the book. You know, my friend Carla said, I want you to write some of your meditations. And, and, then, the, and then the reminiscences started when, it, first of all, the two of us selected the photographs. Mm -hmm and wanted a combination of nature and and also something that would indicate the small towns that dot the Lus Hills and the people who live there. Mm. So the buildings, the the house and and the cupola building in Mapleton came into it. But when I started, I thought, you know, if I write meditations for all these photographs, that's going to be a classic bore. Mm. And then the memories, the rem the memories started to occur. I remember um, <laughs> driving down the middle of the highway with my bicycle when I was four years old, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and being totally oblivious to the traffic behind me. Right. And they were they were afraid to go around because I was doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, so it was wonderful to select the photographs and then let them talk to me and i basically said whatever you tell me mm -hmm. i will faithfully write down yeah well i think it's nice that you captured this essence of nature this essence of americana this essence of small town life and as i drive across um america and i love to do it it's one of my favorite things to do what i find most heartbreaking though is that it's so decaying small town America. They're, they're basically ghost towns, you know, a yes, lot are boarded yes. up. Maybe there's a restaurant, the shops are closed. I mean, when you and I were growing up, there was a vacuum cleaner store, a radio store, a television store, an appliance store yes. in every yeah. small town. There were dry cleaners and there were pharmacists and all of that is gone. Uh, or a lot of it is gone, and to, given way to like CVS, everything on your phone, ordering from Amazon. And the beautiful part of America were these great downtowns, but they're dwindling. So do you feel like you're helping preserve a little bit of Americana with your book? You know, I do. And the the photograph of the public school, which existed, and I'm sorry that the context is missing because it, it's adjacent to the the west branch mm -hmm. of the Little Sioux River. And 
And now that building was, first of all, the school obviously closed years ago. Right. The town was declared a floodplain, so people can't build there. And the building underwent a, a couple of uh, transmogrification, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, somebody, a factory guy bought it and began to build items uh, to specification in that building. And now it's gone all together. Mm. It's gone all together. And the town is is nearly gone. Not yeah. quite, but when we lived there, there were there were two gas stations and um, a grocery store and a public school. Yeah, and and they're all gone now. Yeah, same with my hometown. We had department stores, and uh, we had a real life, a real community, and it's gone. So yeah. uh, I think you've done a great job preserving that, plus informing the folks at home about the Lust Hills. The name of the book we've been exploring today is called The Lust Hills Project. It's written by Kay Francis Scott. And it is also uh, has beautiful imagery and pictures taken by her good friend. Her name is Carla? Carla Louise Manzo. And she's taken wonderful photos for this book. It's a captivating book that takes readers on a journey through the unique geological marvel of the Lust Hills. It's a landscape that has been shaped over millennia by forces of nature. It's a great book. You'll love reading the prose and you'll love looking at the pictures as well. And uh, you'll probably want to go visit this beautiful section of Iowa. Kay, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me, Logan. It's been my pleasure. Pleasure has been all mine. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.